Hello, Prog fans. Welcome to a special midweek episode of Post Game Beers Podcast. I'm your host tonight, Kyle Malloy. We're joined by my co-host, Jacob Sailors at JD Sailors on Twitter. Uh, we've got our producer, Crazy Ray Cartwright, as well as uh, the Sultan of Stat, Martin Guerrero. But we are pumped to be joined by now recurring guest and uh-huh. by my account, maybe not his, a friend of the pod, uh, associate <laughs> head coach, uh, TJ Bruce. Coach Bruce, we are grateful for your time tonight. Thanks for joining us. What's happening? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Always, uh, always good to get on here and talk talk shop. Yeah, we uh, we we do appreciate that. You know, you every time we reach out, you uh, you know, first thing you're like, yep, anytime you guys want. So we try not to take advantage of that. But uh, again, are grateful that uh, that you did join. Uh oh. Did him. Oh. Man, poor MK. We're off to a rip roar and start, but we all are right. grateful that you did uh, join us. <laughs> yeah, all right. I got it's my time to shine. Yeah, coach, especially in mid season. I know you guys are really busy. So, like, what what has the schedule been this week with um, you know the game starting on Thursday? How does that kind of shift y'all's you know preparation? Well, we we normally take Mondays off, so Mondays is always a good day to regroup, uh, which is which is awesome. And then uh, with no Tuesday game, you know, you got Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you kind of get back into it on Thursday. I think in a lot of ways, it's a good thing. Uh, you know, no midweek game. Sometimes I think when you're in a rut, you want to, you want that midweek game, right? So you don't yeah. have to, you don't have to go into practice and do things, but I also think it's a blessing in, in a lot of ways that we had a chance, not many days you nowadays in the season, do you get two back-to-back practice days? That doesn't happen. A whole whole lot, you know. We obviously you do Wednesday, Thursday, but normally Wednesday you're coming off a Tuesday night game. Um, it's going to be super light. Uh, Thursdays is your normal run through for whatever's going to go down on the weekend. But um, I think it's great. I, th- I thought I had a chance for us to regroup as a team and regroup as a staff, and the players got a chance to regroup. So um, you know, I, I think it's I think it's all it's always good. I think we have MK back now. Can we confirm? Dude, no idea what happened. Um, apparently, I was in the garage with no internet. You got nervous. So, That's all right. Yeah, yeah. It happens. It, it happens when I meet a coach in, you know, in person for the third time. So well, You were on a good flow there. Um, Let's get the rhythm back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we want to start with the elephant in the room, Coach. And, yeah. you know, what are your thoughts on the NFL banning the, uh, the swivel hip drop tackle? <laughs> uh, well... You know, it's not going to help the Raiders at all either way. So whether they <laughs> in it, the only way that's going to help the Raiders for me is if they allow 15 people on the field at all times <laughs> just for the Raiders only. So other than that, it doesn't um, – I, I think – I do think the rule is a complete disaster. I, I don't I don't like it. Um, I don't think it's good. Um, I guess there's a safety component to it, but here pretty soon they're going to keep going these safety guidelines and we're not going to have any sports left. Yeah, you might as well put flags on them, right? I mean, if I'm letting my two boys play Alito Pop Warner or whatever they call it, tackle football out here, why, I mean, th- they'll be okay, you know? So go ahead and let these these the, the grown men do it. Are they already uh... – all the way down to the Pop Warner level, are they running the high school offense already so that it's well-versed and drilled into them? Pretty close. I'll tell you, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's an awesome, awesome community, right? Like, the community is second to none. The support is second to none. The people – I always tell people, culture, right? Like, people always want to know, yeah, do they get a transfer here? Do they get a transfer here? Yeah, that's everywhere. For, there's no doubt, but – the culture of Alito sports is incredible and you understand it because it goes down to that level. I mean, Jackson is 10 and we, I say we, I'm just the dad, but they switched defenses going into the Super Bowl. I mean, we started running a cover two and I'm like, <laughs> okay. So now in dad terms, I'm like, buddy, how do you, do you know what you're, cause he played safety. And I'm like, do you know what, what you do? And, 
he's like, well, yeah, it's like, if this guy does this and that guy does that, then I got this lane. And then sometimes we go into cover zero and I'm like, what is going on at 10 years old? <laughs> Has uh, Coach awesome. Dykes reached out to you about uh, totally possibly coming and playing defensive end in the spring ball? <laughs> nah, <laughs> no, I don't, uh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I, I see Sonny every once in a while. Actually, it's, it's, um, but I, I don't have that relationship in terms of I don't see him quite often or we don't speak it at, together a whole lot when we see each other. It's awesome. Um, it's incredible, actually. But we actually have a good friend, um, Ken Wilson, who's now a linebackers coach. We were together at Nevada. Mm, so nice. Ken was the head coach there. He just got hired on my last year there. So it's pretty cool to have a familiar face over there at football and, and to check in on those guys and what they're doing. So you're saying you're hey, going to bring uh, Eric Musselman over from Arkansas to uh, join the basketball staff. <laughs> you know, just have you the whole wolf pack here. There's a few ties. You know, it's kind of cool. Dave Lawn coached at Nevada in two stints. Um, I coached at Nevada and then now Ken Wilson. And I and I thought maybe somebody said somebody else, but I'm not, I'm not sure quite on that. Uh, but I, there's three connections too, which is pretty neat. Hey, TJ, last time we talked, did we – Mention, uh, you were playing at Texas Tech when Sonny was uh, the wide receivers coach over there. 2003. Yeah. Yep. So there was like uh, in my class, there was Kingsbury was there and Wes Welker was there. We had a running back that was actually pretty good. Uh, I forgot his name, uh, but I, I don't know if he went on to play. But yeah, it was it was kind of a small world the way it goes. That's fun. Coach, uh, we've got a million questions to ask, you know, and, yep. and I'm sure you're going to answer them in the, in the first couple answers, but let's get it started. So, yeah. I, you know, you've always been transparent with us and we appreciate that. We appreciate you not shying away from questions. I actually do want to start off on a positive note. Mm -hmm. um, what was working so well when during the non-conference slate? 13 and 0, you guys, you know, managed a couple obviously late inning comebacks. Mm -hmm. It was a fun time to be a Frog fan. What was working well uh, during that early season uh, start? Uh, number one, it's still a great time to be a frog fan. So tell everybody, <laughs> and that's my way to tell everybody, man, don't, don't, don't turn on us now. It's good. It's awesome. Um, but I think, you know, it, it's funny because that's the number one question, right? Is the offense is blistering hot for three weeks. Now we're blistering cold for three weeks. Well, how, mm -hmm. what happened? What's going on? How, how does that happen? And I don't know if I can pinpoint anything. Um, on those first 13 games, but, but I'll tell you, there's almost a, um, there was almost a feeling like they just, they just, they were going out and just playing and the result part of it didn't matter like at all. And I'm not saying that, that results don't matter. And I'm not saying that now all of a sudden we're focused on results, but I'm just saying like during that time, it was, it was just nothing else mattered, but that inning, that pitch, that time. And I think as naturally, right, and I think as the – the you got to 10-0, and 0, right? I think we got to 10-0, and 0, and then all of a sudden you saw a little bit of a cold streak in a game, and I think we beat Abilene 4 nothing, I believe, or something like that, right? And then mm -hmm. you get into Tuesday, then you get into Washington State, and it was a little bit of a struggle. I think we had to come back or yeah. we had to win that game late in the game. And then – and then we got a masterful pitching performance, right? We punched out 19 guys versus Arizona the next day, but we didn't really score a lot of runs. We did enough to win. And I think naturally, I think the pressure creeps in a little bit. Be believe it or not, um, I don't know why it does. Um, I don't know why sometimes it doesn't. But I think at some point, right, you start thinking you have to do more, right? We have to do more. The thing, the hits aren't coming as easy um, the walks aren't coming as easy. Everything they're throwing across the plate seems to be going 12 different directions. Um, you know, because if you want to look back, you beat up on a really good UCLA team. Yeah. I mean, UCLA for one. Now, they, okay. they, in my opinion, don't have the horses on the mound that they once did when I was there. But you're still you're still beating up and sweeping a, a national contender every single year. So we didn't lose. We didn't lose anything. We didn't. It's just I think sometimes it's just how it goes. And I almost think how well can you tread water during those times is really 
always is the difference. Uh, Big 12 pitching staffs, do, have you noticed them uh, changing their, you know, familiar, like, because they, they have, they're familiar with our team, right? Yeah. Do you think there was a cutoff at the point of like non-conference to big 12 where they said, we know how to pitch these guys a little bit differently than UCLA and USC and Arizona and all that. Well, number one, the big 12 pitching is there's major stuff. And by stuff I'm talking, you go to Kansas and you they're running out two guys up to a hundred out of the bullpen. Well, that, that that hasn't happened in, in forever, right? And that doesn't happen, in my opinion, everywhere. Um, then they, they ran out the starter on Friday who was really good, who can basically sink or slide anything, anytime. And then, um, and to answer your question point blank, so, you, so a year ago at this point, here's the year ago at this point, we were, if I can say this correctly, we were the seventh, highest team in the country to see fastballs all we saw was mm -hmm. fastballs a year ago same point same date as as today a year ago now fast forward to 2024 we are the seventh highest to see off speed pitches interesting so i attribute that to um, an offensive culture shift which is good i think it's really good and i think it's really positive um, I think it shows because you got to be able to hit the fastball to have be successful. I think now what we have to do is we have to do a better job in some approach areas more so than anywhere else and understand with the understanding of hunting what you're going to get, not necessarily what you want, if right. that makes sense. Right. And that's kind of where we're in the transition of it. And we're still a good team. We still got great players. Um, but it's going to take some time. You know, you, you lose, you lost almost 70% of your extra base hits from a year ago, 70. And people can say, well, this or that, well, you, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot when you're starting three freshmen and that's a lot. And when now guys are going from freshman year to kind of being hidden to now they are, they are in the middle of the lineup or now they are the main focus. And that's, that takes its toll on on a, on a lot of kids and a lot of teams, and I don't think that's a, there's not enough grace given to those guys and our guys during that during the time like that. So, coach, on our recap show, we broke down some different possibilities of you know if, if we want to just simplify the issue and say yeah. here's what the issue is, you know, and just have it be black and white. Well, is it talent? Do we need to go to the portal, recruit better? Obviously, no. We have extremely talented players. Is it coaching? Well, it's the same coaches that went to Omaha last year, right? Mm -hmm. So we broke down all these different areas, and kind of where we landed is it just seems like it's a confidence issue. Would you mm -hmm. agree with that? Or if, if you had to diagnose it very simply and for like the fans to digest, what would you think is you know just the main root of the issue right now? Yeah, I, I don't I don't think you're far off. Right. And I, and I think, you know, the funny part, uh, the players, we got good players. Um, right. Coach Delara is a hell of a recruiting coordinator, one of the best in the country. Um, our head coach, who was the former recruiting recruiting coordinator, is one of the best head coaches that I've ever been around. Um, so the coaching part is incredible, um, mm -hmm. I think, and I'm super fortunate to be with these guys every single day. And our staff is incredible. Our support staff, everybody's great. Um, I And the players are good, right? right? But I also think, like I just said, I also think it stems a little bit from you're starting three freshmen every day. You're mm -hmm. integrating new transfer portal guys um, into a new team, per se, right? So if you go a year ago, Trey Richardson had to integrate and AD had to integrate into a Braden Taylor team, a Luke Boyers, Maxwell, Curtis Byrne, um, Elijah. He They had to integrate into that to where right. now you have some transfer portal guys that are in. And now we got some new faces, some new surroundings. But to your point, confidence, man, it plays. It's such a fra confidence is such a fragile thing. And we see it right with our own kids. Just. Our yeah. own kids are no different than than 18 to 22 year olds. And I'll be honest with you, coaches, and I'm I'll be 42 in a few days, and that plays a part too. How can you press all the buttons correctly versus UCLA? Mm -hmm. 
And two weeks later, every button you press, it seems like the, the button you press is going to blow up. Yeah. You know, so and then you start questioning and you start doubting. And that's where and Kirk said it best this week. That's where we have to get back to the process, get back to the process of um, winning pitches, the non result oriented stuff. Be really right. good at getting on and off the field. Be really good at our routines. Be really good at taking a breath. Be really good at those things. And those things will instill confidence in us as we keep going. You know, you talk about, I know you just uh, deal with hitting here at TCU mm -hmm. and you handle, uh, you know, is it infield defense as yeah. well? But does that uh, confidence kind of spill over to the pitching staff and where they feel like they have to overcompensate and make a perfect pitch, mm -hmm. knowing that the offense is going through it right now? And then, you know, that leads to them missing pitches and so on and so on. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think there's a lot of, Right. It's, it was before the first three weeks, right? Out, we're now we're just because we've been, you know, in a little bit of a rut the last few weeks, but or last three, right? So I think you got the first three where the pitching staff was finding out who they were and uh, we're they're trying to settle into some different things and we were scoring 10 runs a game. Well, now the pitching staff has, has it. I never want to say anybody figures it out, but they've done a really good job. And Coach Lon and Coach Sarlos yeah. have done a, a phenomenal job. And now the offense is sputtering. But I do think at, I do think there's some truth to what you're saying. Because you have the, the margin for error, right, is this big, right? So the, you only got 17 inches. If you, if you don't hit the 16th inch and you leave it on the 15th inch, it's a difference of a ground ball to second base or a left center – gap double that wins the game and i think that does i don't i think um that's why you've noticed probably a little more skill early in the game normally than what we've ever done or what i've done a, a year ago just to get get a little bit more uh get a little bit of a deep breath <sighs> boom okay mm -hmm. now let's go out and play our game but like you said it, it makes the defense and the pitching because they do work together it makes those two areas man every play and every pitch becomes such a big deal um because we haven't done a good enough job extending um extending the game when we could right uh, early leads and or in my opinion i think a lot of it leads to strikeouts which i i'm, I'm i hate strikeouts probably more than i hate anything else <laughs> um and that's been kind of one of those things in the last few weeks that they've they've kind of crept up higher and higher and higher and that is so um, against if you can just put the ball in play, you put pressure on the defenses and nobody fields the ball, in my opinion, like we do. Um, you know, Oklahoma State's fielding 963, mm -hmm. right? We don't, we struck out 39 times. We only made them play us for two games. That's yeah. all. That's a game and three and a half innings or four innings of we didn't even put the ball in play. So, you know, that those are the little things that we're trying to bring up to our guys and, and, and instill confidence in them uh, in a different way, but also get back to what we were doing. There, Tony Silva is a great player. Luke Boyer is yeah. a great player. Curtis Burns is a great player, man. We just got to get back to it and not worry about the end result and not worry about what could happen in a day, a week, a month. Who cares? It doesn't – because here's the deal. We're not getting all five wins back. We're two and seven in the league. We're not getting all of them back tomorrow. So right. the, that's, that's the truth of the matter. So mm -hmm. let's just concentrate on one inning at a time, one pitch at a time. And that's, that's kind of what we have to do. So um, would you say that it's more of they're trying to do too much at the plate or not trying to do enough? Do you want to see them be more aggressive? Do you want to see them um, maybe not swing at stuff outside the zone so much? Are they selling out for power? Like help us kind of understand a little more of the details of where the issues are. Yeah, I would say the first three weeks, I thought we were almost – we were just about one-to-one -one in walks. <clears throat> walks hit by pitches and punch outs. So we were just about one-to-one. -one. I think at one point we were. I thought we did a really good job controlling the zone yeah. um, in the first three weeks, meaning we were taking the borderline pitch and taking it for a walk. Instead, I felt like the last three weeks, I felt like um, we felt that we had to swing earlier in the count. You know, because I don't I think in some areas aggression is good. Um, I love being aggressive, but I also like being aggressive because you can two strike hit. But I you feel like um, they were they were almost getting antsy. 
Mm -hmm. it, and that's kind of just through my eyes on what I'm seeing that they felt the deeper the count went that they, they were uncomfortable with, with their ability to do certain things deeper in the count. And that's, and I think that's a confidence thing. I think that's a trust yeah. thing. Um, that's what I think. Um, now, to the credit of the pitching staffs, like I said, I think, Martin, I think you were at, at Kansas, right? I think, I mean, that pitching staff that they ran out there was really good. And yep. Oklahoma, you know, Oklahoma had the one guy, I think Witherspoon out of the bullpen that just came in and was as lights out out of the bullpen. I thought we didn't do a great job against their starters on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and then Oklahoma State, I mean, every guy Oklahoma State ran out was 94 up to 98. Every single guy, not one guy was through a pitch below 94. So now you start ramping it up, the velo and the stuff, and now you think your swing's got to ramp up, which is actually completely backwards, right? Interesting. So that's kind of the thought process, and that's trying to walk them through all of it. And then there again, they start pressing. Well, guess who else? Guess who else? I, I'm I'm not – I mean, there's no reason why I shouldn't press either. Then I start pressing. Mm -hmm. Then I don't do a good job in the dugout. Right? So now they're pressing. I'm 42, and I can't control myself every once in a while, and I'm frantic. Well, that's just – that's a recipe for, for it all. And that's where I think Kirk's ability um, to manage and be a head coach is incredible because it's this way. And it it's, may, it, it may shock you to learn that the fans also get frantic. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> well, I've, hey, news. being here a year and a half now, I've seen I've seen enough Twitter handles and I've seen enough different things, and I know it's I know it's easier said than done. Um, but I'm glad you asked those questions so I can try to bring some some guys and some people into really kind of the dugout a little bit on what I'm seeing that I'm I'm not immune to not getting stressed out either. Right. At one point, I sat on. Saturday, I normally stand on deck or near on deck towards the hitter. I sat on the clear other side and was like, hey, I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm going to go sit on the other side. And I just sat on the other side. And, and you know, so you're always trying to new ways to work, um, but you always got to be careful of the messaging. You got to be careful of the optics on what it all looks like and what it means to them. Um, thank God we got a great group and we're all super transparent and really honest. And I believe in that. And, um, so I, I think, you know, it's going to get better. Our guys work their butts right. off all week on some approach stuff. Uh, it's going to get better. Is it? Can I promise you 15 runs tomorrow or Thursday, Friday and Saturday? No, but it's going to get better. And we got a lot of trust in our guys. What is the mood in the uh, with the players? Are they, I wouldn't say panicked, but is there just a little bit of, man, we really got it. Like, I don't even know how to ask, but is what just okay? What is the mood of the players in the locker room? Let me just keep it simple. Honestly, I think they're pretty good. I think they're super aware of what's gone down, but I think they've been really good. I think they've been really positive. Um, they've been, they've been, and I'll, some of the older guys came into my office today. They've been the ones initiating it. They've been the ones sometimes being the adult. Mm -hmm. Right. Which I think that happens right with our kids. I mean, I get bossed around by my 14 year old every single day. Um, Dad, you can't do that. You can't say that. You know, yeah. so I think um, they've been really good. And it's really it's really good to see because it's the culture and it's the program that Kirk's instilled in everybody, too. So that trust, that belief will be fine. Yeah. Um, like I said, where when. I, I don't know that it's baseball and it's sports and it happens. And if it was easy to win, everybody would win every year. And I would have more than one national title. <laughs> yeah. We, we said on, we said on uh, Monday night, it, we wouldn't be shocked if we were doing the show next Monday and we're talking about three games against Houston, where we scored double digit runs <laughs> because, well, and we just saw it happen last year. Mm -hmm. it, it was just a flip of a switch. Like, does that get brought up? Like, Hey, you know, we saw what we did last year. So, you know, we'll be fine. Yeah, I think the great thing about it is, is we've kind of been through it a little bit. You know, these older guys have been through it. Um, doesn't make it any easier, but mm -hmm. that you have to rely on, you have to, 
rely on your experience. And that's the only thing we all have. We do it as parents every day. We do it as adults. We're, we're parenting our kids based on our experience a lot of times. And that's what we have to do with these guys. And that's what they have to do is they have to rely on their experience, what they went through a year ago, walk these younger guys through, make sure these younger guys aren't panicked. And now it's our job to make sure these older guys don't panic and we have to help them with the walk. And let me just tell you, they're helping us with the walk just as much. And we're doing it together. It's you have, and Kirk said it best on Sunday, the one thing, and all he told the team on Sunday was stay together. Mm -hmm. You can't, it's easy to deviate right now. It's easy to point fingers. It's easy to call out this guy and that guy. Don't do it. It's stay together. That's rat poison. Not, it's not happening. And our guys haven't done that. And it's, it's been, it's been awesome to see. And it's been a, it's been a great week, to be honest with you. It's been a great week of practice. What's that mean? It doesn't guarantee, yeah. guarantee anything, but the process, the process is practice and it's been really good. So speaking of confidence, I know I want to dig in a little bit more. I've got a 12 year old who's really struggling at the plate right now. So if you want to offer any uh, tips or advice, I'd appreciate it. Uh, we can move on. Um, so when well, my 10 year old, about, sorry to interrupt you, my 10 year old, I have to send him to lessons because he doesn't want anything to do with me. So exactly. I'm, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we're at. My wife goes, I can't believe we're paying for lessons. Right. <laughs> but I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. So uh, one of my friends is a, a, a big league manager. Okay. He sends his kid to lessons. And it's funny because he told me this story. It's an unbelievable story. It's so true. He goes, all they hear when it comes out of your mouth, you are their hero. All they hear is criticism. They're mm -hmm. letting you down. That's mm -hmm. all the kids hearing. And so what better to send them to somebody else, hear something else, lean on somebody else, and you just get to be the dad. And I, yeah. once I did that, once he told me that, we I couldn't write the check fast enough. I don't even, not that you're writing checks anymore, but I couldn't send the money through Venmo or wherever anymore. <laughs> Is that friend Skip Shoemaker? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> it's funny. I've got uh, Jansen Whitney actually lives across the street, but he's all booked up. Like I can't get a, I can't get right. a lesson in with him. So. Hunter Wolf too. Yeah. Um, so you talked about some of the leaders on the team, some of the guys that have been there before. They've seen it. They've done it. Mm -hmm. Trying to teach the younger guys. Do you see some guys putting more pressure on themselves to be the guy to be like, I'm going to turn this game around. I want, I want, I want it on my back, and I'm going to get the hit of the day. Or is it a kind of a collective effort that every everybody's struggling, and we're not really sure how to figure this out? Well, I think there's some guys putting a lot of pressure on themselves. I, I do. I, I think the older guys for sure. I think you know they all are to a degree, right? They're supposed to be this. They're supposed to be that. And really, what they're doing is. They're living out, they're living, trying to live up to an outside expectation. And that's never good. When we do it as parents, when we do it as people, that's not good. That that just add it's added stress that you don't need when they just need to be the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. Curtis Byrne just needs to be Curtis Byrne. He doesn't need to be any more. He doesn't mean need to be Curtis Byrne and Braden Taylor. He just needs to be Curtis Byrne. Elijah Nunez last year was struggling just like B Tay was, right? And that was, the, I'll never forget one conversation I had with Braden was all of a sudden people forget that these guys are kids and what they're going through. Draft, family, uh, agents or whomever, or this person or this. We forget. We forget mm -hmm. that they're 22 years old and they're kids. Yeah. And I think, I think they're trying to do too much. And I think they're trying to be more. Peyton Chatagnier is trying to be. Peyton Chatagnier double time or whatever, you know, he's trying to, he's not, he's a really good player. He's a high, high energy player. He's a kid that you want your daughter to marry one day and just go be yourself. Mm -hmm. you, yourself is good enough. Mm -hmm. Is he uh, the type that you can see whenever he's starting to pull himself out of the slump is whenever he's drawing more walks again. Cause that's one thing he really did those first three weeks was mm -hmm. uh, draw walks. I think he had 16 of them. Yep. And here in conference play, that just hasn't carried over. The one key for me, um, the one key for me with Shat is how vocal he is. 
that's kind of my key indicator for where he's at during the day is that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he knows that and he's super aware and he's an incredible person and an incredible player. And, um, that's probably like an indicator for me more so than the walks or the hits or that it's like, okay, where's he at? Can I, if I can hear him, then we're good. The minute you can't hear him or you're not really sure, then, then, then you just go give him a little nudge, say, Hey man, you, you good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, let's go. Let's go to work. So what's one, the plan? We actually have, we, I want to continue on that, Jacob. Real yeah, quick. sure. Go we, ahead. We a, mm-hmm. Our friend Bella Fox actually asked about the leadership in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. It sounds like Chatney is kind of one of those vocal leaders, you know. But is there a difference in, you know, the Chatneys and you know the vocal leaders, or maybe the rah rah guy, like on game day, like I'm going to pump you up versus mm-hmm. kind of the silent leadership we saw with Braden Taylor last year, where hey, actions speak louder than words. Are there different guys that your team is counting on each day to kind of step up? Yeah, I think I think more so now it's collectively as as a group. I think they have they have a pretty strong bond. It feels like with these older guys, and there again, I think that's what you want. If it starts out with three, bring a fourth. Then four gets to five. Then five gets to six, and then it just so on, and and it keeps growing and growing. Um, but in terms of the leadership, I mean, there again, I, we got unbelievable people in our program, mm-hmm. and we have un. I got two daughters and if they married any of them, it would be incredible. And that's the type of people that we have. And they, like I said, I think it's going back to, you know, JD, what you said is, is being is confidence and going yeah. to be yourself is good enough. Just go be yourself, go be the best version of you. And that's always plenty. And, um, I think in that mix, you do have maybe a vocal guy. Maybe you got this guy. Maybe you got the silent guy. Maybe you got the guy that pulls guys in the corner and just says, "Hey, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do this." And it's a, you know, um, does that mean that fairy dust is gonna sprinkle on them? Nah, that doesn't mean that. But it does mean that you got everybody pulling on the same end of the rope, and everybody wants to do the same thing. Yeah, it it seems like you know where we landed was ultimately it's, you know, it's a confidence issue, but it also seems like it just takes one, two, maybe three guys to, you know, start going two for four. And then the rest of the guys can kind of relax a little bit saying, Oh, it can be done. You know, it's not impossible (laughs) because it seems like right now it's, you know, if the guy in front of you is struggling and you know, he's going over for four and now you're walking up to the plate and it's like, well, now it's my turn. Uh, And I, I feel like there's a, like a contagious effect. And I think it can go the other way just as easy. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything's contagious, right? I mean, winning's contagious, not playing well is contagious. Learning's contagious. I mean, it's all, it's, it's all contagious. And I think, I think we just, we have to make our own breaks and not wait for the break to happen and go, Oh yeah. You know, we have to make things happen ourselves, And that's why I think you'll continue to see us force um, the action probably earlier and sooner than, than later than we have in the past. You know, it's like Sunday, I think in the first four innings, we hit and ran four times mm-hmm. in the first four innings. And it was just, you're trying to force the action to just get some things started. And I think that's, we have to take ownership and we have to take the bull by the horns and we have to go and, and do that. Coach, how do you as a coach instill the confidence in these players? I mean, you can tell them all day, Mm -hmm. hey, just be yourself, you know, back to the bait. How do you instill that in them and show them? Well, it's funny, you know, I'm a I'm a huge man of faith and and people always say uh, you, you know, when bad things happen, more most most people, not most, but some people pull away. Right instead of leaning in more to God. And, and that's, that's something that I think we have to do. We have to do. Um, and just say me and JD on the offensive side, we got to lean more into them instead of pulling away. And that's, you know, because it's easy. And I'll, I'll just speak for myself. Um, it's, it's very easy for me personally to all of a sudden go, well, we got to get better and just keep, you know, going, going, going instead lean into them. They need their arm around them at that time. They mm-hmm. they already know they just struck out with the bases loaded. Why do they need me to chirp at them? They don't need that, right? Just if I were to call a squeeze and it doesn't work, I don't need 
8,000 people in Lupton tell me it's bad. I already know I just did a bad call. You know what I mean? It's like, so I think that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to lean in to them as, as best as you can. But I also think too, I think this as a staff, what our staff does a good job of is lean on each other as best we can too. Cause it's, it's, it gets lonely sometimes. I mean, this, the coaching world's not, not for the, what do they call it? Not for the faint at heart or whatever. It's yeah. not, it, it's when you're good, it's not, it's not you when you're bad, it's all you, right. It's, yeah. it's just kind of how it goes. Um, but I think, I think you just got to pour into these guys as best you can and make it so much about the little things and the little things turn to big things. And that's, that's, that's what happens. Like this week was about the breath. Kirk talked about it this week was how we, we breathe without even knowing that we breathe, but now can we focus on the breath and, and the breath brings clarity, clarity brings presence. And so there you go. Those are just some things that, with without getting hits if our guys are cl clear and present I i'll take that any day of the week doesn't mean we're gonna win but it gives you a better option than if you're not <laughs> this made me laugh <laughs> someone in the chat said my apologies coach <laughs> <laughs> what was that in reference to jacob um <laughs> I think it's going back to, hey, I don't need every 8,000 people at Lupton yelling at me. <laughs> hey, that, so that's a good transition. Part, hey, it's part of the territory, though, and it's part of what makes Lupton Stadium so cool. Okay, uh, so talk about that. How does how does Lupton compare to Nevada, to UCLA, to other spots that you've been before? Like, oh, and not, not, I realize there, you know, we have uh, ways to improve here in Fort Worth, and sure. so I, I'm not trying to you know, ask you to riz us up, you know, all night, but just like, <laughs> um, d have you enjoyed the fans? Do you, are they, are we fun? Like what's the, what's the deal? Awesome, man. I mean, Nevada, there was about 10 people per game. That's number one. <laughs> mm. you the stadium workers. I mean, yeah. my wife, yeah. heard, when I got upset in the dugout, my wife heard me. <laughs> you guys sit as close to the dugout and you guys can't hear me a whole lot, which is really good. Either that or I'm not getting mad enough sometimes. <laughs> but um, the fans here are incredible. UCLA, uh, you're in the heart. You're in the heart of L.A. It's not that important. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I hate to. I loved my time there um, when we won a lot of games, but it's a storied it, program, which is sad. It's like, sad. You know, the, the, yeah. I mean, you're talking, you're talking for a regional. Uh, we hosted a super two of the years, probably five thousand, maybe at the most, maybe. And That's a Tuesday night for Lupton. Yep, and they're silent as all all can be. I mean, it's um, and Long Beach was pretty neat. Long Beach had a pretty mm -hmm. unique. A pretty unique and kirk knows this too from growing up there but long beach has a pretty unique stadium it's really old it's historic but you can probably get a fullerton i just saw a fullerton long beach weekend this past weekend drew nine thousand people Dang. over the weekend which was really cool um and they long beach state outdraws ucla usc stanford any day of the week um which is you know it's a mid-major verse um the power five but i think lupton's such a unique atmosphere it's very tight it's very on top of you and i i get goosebumps when it starts rolling in there which i love it mm -hmm. so the people watching man bring bring the juice even if you're gonna yell at me that's fine it's i'll wear it if it's gonna get us fired up then let's then i think it's a really cool atmosphere um i think our guys love it and i think our guys need it and it's it's a, it's a it's incredible yeah, we're not going anywhere. We'll still be there for sure. Um, so just before we wrap up, I just um, I wanted to ask about Peyton Tolley and if there's a plan to maybe integrate him more into the offense um, going forward or what? what's the plan there? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, uh, you, you know, the one thing that you're always trying to, to, to battle with is the starting pitching deal and the DH deal. And I think, mm. you know, it's it's just a, such a unique – situation you know the only other person i can compare it to kirk's coach more two-way guys but the only the only thing i can compare it to was jason vargas i played with jason vargas in 2004 he dh friday sometimes saturday but started on sundays a little different with 
with PT, right? He's starting on a Friday night, right? So a lot of it's going to determine matchups and then how he feels on Saturday. But yeah, that, that's the plan. I mean, the plan is to get him going. Um, I thought he's made huge strides. Um, but there again, I think it's just another example of an incredible person, incredible talent, incredible player that's just thinks he has to be more than who he is. And he, what he is is good enough. And I think that's something that we have to do uh, a good job of is, is just keep telling those guys that and keep telling them that it's, it's all good. It's going to be fine and you're good enough. And so the pitching stuff he has it dialed in um, him and coach Lana done, have been, been great together. Uh, and so now we got to get the back going. Yeah. You know, with Peyton, how much does the outside of what he's got going on in personal life, his personal life, weigh on him as a player? Well, I mean, we've all been there, right? I mean, we've all been in some way, shape or form, bid something. And I think I think it probably does for sure. I think as much as we want work or whatever we're doing, baseball or football or whatever we're playing to be our outlet, it's hard because – Normally, the things that we love to do, we do them with the people that we love, you know, and I think I think that's a really hard um, I think it's hard. And I think, um, you know, we've all some of our staff have been through similar things or different things. And all we can do is be there for him and all he can do is channel Jeez. channel his best um version of himself and pour it into and pour it into um how he takes the field and how he does um walking off the mound or walking to the plate and it wasn't about striking out 15 people it's not about getting 15 hits it's about being present where you're at and i think um if he does that he'll be fine and he's done that he's done an incredible job at it to be honest with you it's some things are just out of our control and and I feel like he's done an incredible job managing and handling all all types of situations. Uh, one of our um, good friends Jackson Day uh, made a bet that uh, our TCU pitching staff would hit more home runs than the entire Baylor baseball team. So we <laughs> were we really want to see him back in the lineup. Um, daily. Uh, if you could make that happen, coach, uh, we, we would appreciate that. The, you know, you know, we'll, we'll, he has we'll, a, he has a t-shirt design ready to go. If it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had a few dingers today in BPS. So that's all right. Yeah, there you go. Um, we're going to, we're cool. going to stop on that because that's a good, that's a good note to stop on. Hey coach, we're 24 of 54 games in, we've still got 30 games to go in the regular season. Mm. Um, despite the frustrations and questions, you are right that it is a good time to be a frog fan. So uh, you don't have to offer your transparency, but you do every time we ask. We appreciate that. Grateful for your time tonight, Coach. Um, thank you, and and good luck against Houston. All right. Awesome. I appreciate you guys having me. See you guys out at the field tomorrow. All right, yes, sir. Go frogs. Thanks, Coach. All right, go frogs. Go frogs.